<laughs> Go to Aaron Torres with us here. Hey, AT, how you doing? Happy anniversary, Mr. and Mrs. Elson. Yeah, thank you. I'll say thank you for them. Uh, they're actually. Well, aren't you going to tell them I said happy anniversary? I mean, sure. that's going to happen, right? They're they're locked down uh, under a snowstorm in Pittsburgh right now, so I'd say they'd usually be working, but I don't think they're working today. You remember what it's like to be under a snowstorm? I mean, you're you're a, you're a northeasterner who's been uh, in Southern California long enough to get a little bit soft about snow, right? I love snow. It's funny. I heard. I, I was never the fan of raking leaves. That was the one oh, that yes. tripped me up. But, but I never minded snow. Um, it was funny seeing all the, you know, people in the middle of Central Park or Times Square. Oh, it's, it's the star of the century. You know what I used to do when I was like 12, 13, 14 years old? Eat the snow? I used to load up my iPod with, uh, with uh, you know, the latest jams. And I used to go for long, at, long walks in the snow with my dog. I had a part husky dog. And we just used to go out for hours. There's nothing more peaceful than walking in a snowstorm. Uh, Not like these soft millennials these days that want to post about how tough it is on Instagram. I used to go out there in my boots and me and the dog used to go for a walk. It was great, man. I miss it. As a matter of fact, I can definitively tell you, I remember that the tuck rule game, which was Brady versus the Raiders, was a Saturday night. And I almost missed the play because I was out for a walk and lost track of time. Because I was in Connecticut, which is right down the street from Boston, so we were getting the same snowstorm they were. I know you love to learn about Arkansas history and Arkansas sports, AT. Do you know that the referee <laughs> who, 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 uh, who, who worked that game, the head official who made the call, you remember his voice, Walt Coleman, Little Rock native. <laughs> wow. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think and that's – hey, huh? we Ty and I did this years back. It's like without that call, would there even be like a Tom Brady goat – because that's that would have stopped them dead in their tracks in his rookie, not his rookie season, but you know the, the year that he became Tom Brady, the legend. Well, and you know, I mean, you remember this, Phil. I don't know if Matt would, but uh, you know, there was like a legit Braze versus Bledsoe debate late into the playoffs, and Bledsoe you know, beat the Steelers won- in the AFC title game. Brady did not; he got hurt. Bledsoe came in. That's right. Okay, see, so you even remember better than I do. Well, I was at that game. Workout. Gosh, that, that was a okay. heartbreaker. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I was going to say was, though, you're absolutely right, is is if they lose that game, you know, Brady's just some dude that got hot late in the season and lost in the first round of the playoffs. So it's a great, great, great conversation. So to the Brady fans out there, to the Patriots fans, thank you, Walt Coleman. All right, I want to ask some, uh, some college football stuff for this weekend. Sure. And, of course, we, we want to get into the matchups. But, you know, but just before we brought you on, you see the statement from Brian Kelly that he's threatening to not play in the college football playoff if they don't allow the families in. And I'm not going to make a statement whether or not families should be allowed in here. I think there probably will be. But I just want to laugh at the thought of Notre Dame boycotting the college football playoff. I'll do that <laughs> off the microphone. <laughs> well, And it's crazy because, you know, the epicenter of that is right down the street from where I am, which is the Rose Bowl. Um, And I would say, listen, you know, we've all kind of poked fun at at these health officials and all that stuff, and I think rightfully so. Um, But we can play games in L.A. County. I mean, USC is playing tonight at the Coliseum, 15 minutes from where I live. UCLA is playing at the Rose Bowl tomorrow, two minutes from where I live. So games can be played, but, yeah, the no fans thing, you know, I, I hadn't really considered it until the last day or so and i just kind of thought hey this is 2020 uh we're you know the new norm quote unquote i didn't think it was going to be as big of a deal and i've obviously seen the last few days it kind of pick up steam and then yes i did see that quote phil uh from brian kelly uh what i would say is i think it'll be interesting because if they don't beat clemson tomorrow they'll probably be the fourth season they're going to be playing alabama and new orleans anyway um but to, to your point uh yeah i think Notre Dame's play and i think if they tell them you're playing in a parking lot in uh, Dubuque, Iowa. They'll show up ready to go. Uh, so I do think it's interesting. But listen, you know, use that political. I'll say this: it's not going to get the LA health officials to change their plans, but maybe it will get the game moved. I mean, that's the possibility. You're not going to get fans at the Rose Bowl on January 1st. I just don't see it happening. But maybe the game does get moved for a year, and there is no Rose Bowl for the first time. And I think over a century. Yeah, I'm just, I'm still lost in the thought of the Hawkeye parking lot bowl. I like that idea. Um, so, all right, yeah, there you go. That'd be fun. All right, uh, Clemson, Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame can hang with them. I'm not going to say they're going to win. I see a ten and a half point favorite for Clemson. I think Notre Dame gets within that. I think you'll see the Fighting Irish deservedly in the college football playoff. You know, and so many people want to discount their win over Clemson to begin with because Trevor Lawrence didn't play. I get it. 
but DJ Uwe Galalele was awesome to begin with, and it wasn't a matter that yeah. Clemson didn't score enough. They couldn't stop Notre Dame. So I'm with you, and I, I feel like it's a total square play because everybody, I think, that, that understands football is on Notre Dame keeping it competitive. It, and it's because of what you just said, Phil. And, you know, I've been hammering this point home all week is that, you know, Notre Dame didn't win that game because Trevor Lawrence wasn't on the field. Notre Dame won that game because they dominated along both lines of scrimmage. For people who forget, they averaged over five yards per carry, closer to five and a half. Uh, Clemson averaged one yard per carry uh, behind a, a banged up offensive line and their defensive front was banged up. And so, you know, I think for a Clemson fan, what you would sit there and say is it wasn't just Trevor Lawrence. We did have issues defensively that, uh, you know, guys have gotten healthy since. But I'm with you, Phil, man. And, you know, the thing I'll say, I believe this is, and I've said it on my radio show and my podcast, I believe this is the best Notre Dame team of my time as a college football viewer. Now, I was born the year in 88 I was alive when they won it uh, you know in 88 but I'm not old enough to remember that team but teams that I've seen this is the best one they're balanced they run the football Ian Book is a veteran not saying they're going to win it I think they weirdly don't match up well with with Alabama that's who they end up facing at some point but I think this is the best team that I've seen and I, and I just think that line is incredible but I've seen everybody on the uh, on the Irish this weekend and so maybe we're all wrong maybe we're all wrong Aaron Torres here with us on Halftime AT. Let's go to the SEC Championship, Alabama versus Florida. And I think if we'd asked this question two, or th two, two and a half weeks ago, we might have got a different response. But for the way the Gators lost to LSU and the way Alabama's looking right now, is it is it as simple to say that Alabama's fixing to just have a field day against Florida? Or do you think this will be a closer game than a lot of the experts think? Yeah, Matt, I, you know, I've heard that narrative a lot. You know, the, 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 the LSU game changes things. I'll be honest, to me, uh, it doesn't really change anything, and the reason is it's because it's Alabama. And, you know, you guys saw it firsthand uh, the other day, uh, you know, in Fayetteville. I will say, I, I made this argument about three or four weeks ago. I think this is the most dominant to date Alabama team of the Nick Saban era, which sounds crazy. But back when they were dominating in the early 2010s, they didn't have an offense like this. And then the last few years when the offense got really good with Tua and all the, the weapons that have come in around him and with him, they didn't play defense like this. And so, you know, we get so wrapped up in, in, in the pyrotechnics and the fireworks of the offense. And first of all, I brought up this point yesterday in Tuscaloosa. You know, you think about all the great offenses that we have in college football this year. We, we make such a big deal about Kyle Trask in Florida, uh, BYU, Zach Wilson. Yeah, Alabama is better than them in every statistical category. But I don't think what people realize, and I know Arkansas fans do after last weekend, is that Alabama has the number one ranked defense in the SEC right now. And I believe when we're talking about teams, um, you know, that have played more than a handful of games, like teams that have played more than four or five games, I believe they're in the top ten nationally. I could be wrong on that. So it doesn't mean they're going to win the championship. doesn't mean they can't be competitive. I don't know that people realize just how dominant Alabama has been of late. And I'm telling you, man, this is a team unlike any that I've ever seen. And they also feel like they have a chip on their shoulder after the way last year ended with LSU and all that stuff. We've, we've seen a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of the, like, I guess controversy may be the best word for how the playoff committee has seated a lot of these teams. You've seen where Florida yep. only drops one spot, but I don't want to focus on Florida. I want to focus more on Cincinnati because you've seen Cincinnati's head coaches came out and you've seen different people come out that the group of five teams are getting a fair shake, particularly yep. with the Cincinnati Bearcats. So, what needs to happen, not necessarily this season, because I think it's a foregone conclusion. It's either it, like the final four teams are set, or it maybe could possibly be Florida, A&M, Ohio State, whatever. What needs to happen in the future to give teams like Cincinnati a fair shake to try to make a college football playoff? You know, Matt, it's a great question, and I'm one of those people complaining, not because I think that Cincinnati is definitively one of the four best teams, but because it's obvious that they're just making stuff up to keep dropping them down the pole so they don't even get a shot at this thing. Um, you know, when your argument is they haven't played in a while and Ohio State's played two games in the last five weeks, that argument kind of goes out the window. Um, and, and when your argument is, if your argument then becomes, well, games on the field have to matter, well, how do you not move Florida down after they just lost on Saturday as a 24-point favorite at home? And so, to me, Matt, you know, I, I think – there's two things. I mean, one, the obvious thing is just expand the playoff. I have never been a proponent of expanding the playoff because, you know, I, I think we've seen all year, you know, we're talking about Florida as the sixth, seventh, eighth best team in the country. 
they're an 18 point favorite to get underdog against Alabama this weekend. And so I don't think letting more teams in is the answer, but I think just giving these teams a fair shake. And when Mike Oresco, the AAC commissioner said on Feinbaum the other day, uh, Oh, uh, you know, let's just bring back the BCS because at least the computers were more fair. Like I tend to agree. And so, you know, I, I haven't gone so far as to look at what the makeup of the, the committee is this year. I know it's always a bunch of former football coaches, a bunch of ADs. I do wonder about group of five representation there because, you know, I, I've never once, and, and I don't think that I will, say that I believe that Cincinnati is definitively one of the best teams in the country. If I, somebody actually asked me yesterday if I was ranking teams, I would probably have them number six behind a and I'd keep the, the five the way they are and have them number six behind a and um, But, you know, I, I just don't think it's fair. And, and what I've argued for the last two or three weeks is if we're just going to make up arbitrary rules to drop them, then just don't rank them. If, if what you're telling us, which is what the committee has told us the last two or three weeks, is that they have no shot no matter what they do, then just say that and don't rank them. Just let them do their own thing. Let them have their own playoff. Let them crown their own champion. But if you're going to put them in the same rankings, you can't tell me that they deserve to drop a spot when Ohio State didn't and that they deserve to be behind uh, behind Florida, which just lost as a 24-point favorite. Completely agree. 100% agree. It's going to be a couple weeks before we talk to you again, obviously with Christmas next Friday, the New Year's Day the following Friday. So just real quick before we let you get off here, who's your final four teams? Who's going to be in the college football playoff? I just don't see the big upset tomorrow. I mean, I obviously kind of said I think Alabama rolls. I think Notre Dame keeps it close. Um, I'll tell you this, guys. I'll tell you this. Um, I think the interesting scenario that nobody is talking about is what if Clemson actually outright loses tomorrow? And I think you can still make the case that Clemson, as a two-loss team, if both are competitive, one with Trevor Lawrence, is if we're arguing them versus a a four-loss team, or excuse me, a one-loss A&M team, which lost by four touchdowns to Alabama, I think there's an argument to be made that Clemson is the fourth-best team in the country. Uh, I don't know if the committee will go there, but we have talked about this being a made-for-TV event. What gets bigger than Mac Jones, the probable Heisman Trophy winner, versus Trevor Lawrence, the number one pick in the draft, uh, and then, of course, two great brands in Ohio State and Notre Dame in the other game? I'm not saying it'll happen, but that's the argument I haven't heard anybody make, is that... If, if Clemson loses this game, I at least think they should be in the conversation. And again, if part of it comes down to there isn't that obvious team outside of the top four right now that we feel like deserves to be there. I mean, A&M, you know, their best wins are against the Florida team that just lost, against an Auburn team that just fired their coach. Um, you know, we just talked about Cincinnati. And I mean, are we really talking about a two-loss um, Big 12 team being better than a two-loss Clemson team? I just think it's an interesting conversation. I'm not ready to go there yet because Alabama or uh, Clemson, excuse me, is a, is a double digit favorite. I think it's an interesting conversation to have, though. I really do. It's an interesting scenario, and maybe we'll be yeah, talking it about it tomorrow night. At Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Looking forward to talking to you on the other side. All right, guys, have a great holiday season. I appreciate you guys having me every single week. Love coming on. Have a great holiday, guys. You got it. Make Thanks sure you team. download his latest podcast, Aaron Torres pod, uh, Sports Podcast, also at AaronTorresOnline.com. Also still have some time to enter the Champion Cycling Bicycle Giveaway at HitThatLine.com. You see free bike link top of the page. Click it. Leave your info. You're entered to win either a specialized alley road bike or a specialized 12-inch Rip Rock Kids Bike. Brought to you by Champion Cycling in Fort Smith. Check out their inventory at championcycling.com. Also in person at 5500 Massard Road. Matty T, thanks for the Hanukkah gifts. You got in on the last day. I did. That's, day. You I, did. I knew it. I was... He gave me old school baseball cards. Yeah. Perfect for a baseball geek of 43 years of age. All right, halftime back. Stay with us.